Jordan French here, Grit Daily News. Welcome back to Webit uh, Economic Impact Day. I'm here with an awesome, awesome guest. Uh, some of you know her company well. Uh, soon will be initiated on her individually, and that's Siri Borsum, Siri Global VP Finance Vertical at Huawei. Uh, Siri, welcome to Webit. Thank you so much, Jordan. It's so so good to see you. The world's still virtual, as we can see. No pun intended. I know. I but know. It's such a sh- such a shame. I wish we could have been there. I would have been so much better. But uh, I guess uh, we take what we can get. Yeah, I, uh, I'm planning on next time already. Let's plant the seed. We'll do this and we'll do this in person uh, for this audience. And and speaking of of audience, you know, so much to unpack here. Uh, just you know, high level uh, preview on on competition. Uh, on finance and financial health, uh, and just for the uninitiated on you, you know, not everyone knows your name just yet. Um, but you've had an extensive background, uh, you know, in tech building communities, uh, in finance, and I, and already we had some questions uh, from the audience on, on you know, why why did you take a job at Huawei uh, in the finance vertical? Well, thank you for that question, uh, Jordan. Um, so. When I, um, I, I, I spent 12 years at, at Google, um, and that was an, an amazing company, and I learned so much. Uh, when I left, I, um, I, I made uh, the promise to myself that I wanted to take everything that I learned um, and the passion that I have for, for um, how technology can provide consumers with, with uh, better um, services and, and support. And make their lives even better, right? So, uh, when when Huawei approached me and they said, "Well, um, Siri, we are uh, we're bringing the um, our mobile ecosystem uh, globally. Do you want to be a part of that?" So, so what that means is to be a competitor to the um, Apple iOS and the App Store and Google or Android's um, Play. And um, we're actually building um, a, the third global mobile ecosystem. And I think it's important because we spend 88% of all the time we spend on our phones, we spend in apps. And we need competition in this game to, to make sure that we as consumers actually get better, better products and better solutions. Um, so for me, that was a... It was a clear goal. Um, I'm building my, um, my, my team from my desk here in the office in Oslo, Norway. Um, and it's a global team. So, so just the fact that, um, that uh, Huawei recognized that Norway is a, is a country or the Nordics is a, a region that is well ahead when it comes to providing uh, great financial services um, to their customers uh, was also highly appreciated. Yes, yeah, certainly. And, and a lot to unpack there. And just so we can frame this for the audience really well, Siri, what, you know, just to read this back to you, you painted a picture that there's almost like a, like a duopoly with, uh, with app stores. And that's Apple, uh, Google, obviously Google Play. And, and what you're proposing essentially is, uh, you know, Huawei is a, is a contender, uh, you know, as a third option. Uh, and that second, you know, you have this uh, background in Google, uh, inquiring minds want to know, how, how was Huawei different on arrival relative to the development of, uh, you know, how far along Google's come with, with the Play Store? Well, uh, obviously, um, Android has been around and, and the, the, the Play Store has been around for a very, very long time. And I remember myself, because I worked at Google at that time, how everyone that had an iPhone actually had apps on their phones and and we were running around going, oh, I have an Android phone and, and I don't have an, the apps there. So I can recognize that. It mm-hmm. took three, four years until um, the developers recognize Android as a platform. And, and obviously it will take time before the developers uh, recognize the app gallery that we call our app store um, as well. But but and I think that's fair. Um, it, it's going to take time, and and, and it is a, a challenging uh, role that we're um, and uh, a big challenge that we're taking upon us. But it it is an extremely important one. 
Um, secondly, why finance? Um, uh, so my responsibility is to um, is to bring all the financial apps into the app gallery. And and the reason because I find that so important is because I I, I truly believe that financial health is is a uh, something the industry needs to take upon itself as a as a common uh, challenge because if we don't get financial health amongst whether it's um, the US population here in Europe or um, in Asia uh, it is not sustainable and in order to do that we actually need to um, provide um, innovation and we do that um, through competition so what I'm trying to do is to talk to not only the big major players that everyone knows from before, but I, I talk a lot and we spend, I think I spent 80% of my time talking to the smaller fintechs. There is a lot of money per, sort of entered into the fintech environment these days, and they are all there to try to find and, and create better solutions because Obviously, um, I think we can all recognize that there are some uh, major players out there that have been a little bit slow on providing consumers with their absolute with, with services that they deserve and that they definitely need. Yeah, cer certainly a, a lot to unpack there, too. I mean, we'll set the innovation topic aside for just a second and get back to it. And just to frame the finance vertical, again, uh, a lot of uninitiated in this space, uh, you really have the audience thinking here about apps that they download and have their phones. If you could share, uh, what is the, the sort of constitution of, of what's in these app stores? Is it like half our finance or is it a much smaller or larger fraction? So do you mean um, how, how many of the apps that are financial? Apps? Yes. Well, uh, it, it's kind of uh, interesting because it's been... Um, that number is growing, obviously. So during um, 2020, we saw an increase in usage of financial service apps um, with 45%. And that is obviously, and unfortunately, due to the um, COVID situation and the pandemic. Uh, but what I think we've seen is the two things. One is that everyone has had to well, not every bit, but most of the financial institutions have actually uh, grabbed this as an opportunity because they've had to um, improve their digital um, solutions. And uh, us as consumers have also sort of um, understood that it's not as difficult. It's not as scary. It is secure. Um, the financial institutions are actually really looking well after um the way you do your uh, your your finances on the um, on, on the phone, so so those things have, have increased, and I think we would just see more and more of it. And there are better and better solutions that are coming our way. Uh, now I think um, our job is to make sure that customers are that they feel safe, um, and that we also uh, explain to them um, in in with with normal words what it is all about not use all these tech and finance words that we tend to do in both industries, um, which is a, which is not a, we need to, to improve on that, but um, we need to, to just make sure we have everyone on board. There is a huge part of um, any country's population that um, is not part of digital banking. And we see that we're going in that direction. So, um, we have a big job to do. Yes, yeah, cer certainly do. And just to you know, just to clarify on that question, it sounds like uh, it's a significant portion of the apps are on, that are on any of these stores. Uh, you know, are finance related. People really do go to these app stores, including Huawei's, with intent to download uh, a finance app. Did I get that right? Oh, absolutely, yes. And then, so for you stepping in this role, it sounds like uh, it's more of an opportunity. Uh, you're starting closer to the ground up and can perhaps rebuild things or sorry, build things in a way uh, that you intend to and capture more innovative, uh, you know, apps and companies that are that are offering products. So a natural thing to ask you is 
Uh, what do you see on the horizon that you think you can add to Huawei's app store that perhaps people don't see on, on the other platforms, Siri? Yeah, and so that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, uh, so when I said in the beginning, we need competition. Um, and and I, I, I think that it's crucial that we don't end up in a winner-takes-it-all uh, situation uh, when it comes to financial service apps. Um, and that can easily happen with big tech because they have a lot of data about us. They would be able to help us in a very good way. Um, and, and therefore, I, I believe that the um, industry um, itself needs to take this opportunity um, and, and, and or grab this opportunity um, by uh, leveraging on technology. So what... What we are doing now is that we, and we just uh, launched that, yes, uh, last week, uh, a partnership with the with an open banking um, provider called Neonomics. Um, and so what we're doing is we're providing the open banking API um, to uh, all the 5 million developers that we have um, on the app gallery with the possibility to use that technology. That is one of the things that uh, we do. And we want to give that to everyone um, so that they can leverage and they can um, innovate on, on that technology or with those APIs. Yeah, certainly. And, and just for context, context you shared earlier, 560 million uh, sort of users globally. I think you said something around 89 or 90 million just in, just in the EU. What, uh, you know, and so within Huawei's system, what are the types of asks uh, that the consumers have? Uh, perhaps more granular question would be, Siri, to be fair. Um, you know, what are the most popular demands uh, that, um, uh, you know, on the apps uh, that, uh, that consumers uh, have? For example, you know, payment systems or, or are they looking for, uh, you know, an advisor? We're, we're also curious. I, I think we see all of it. Um, I think we see um, moving forward. So for the, for the future, I think we will see um, an increase in super apps. Um, the uh, where um, we all, we will also see a lot more of uh, what we call embedded finance, or where payments are. Um, how do I say that in, in with simple words? Where, where, where payments are added into uh, the product, um, so it. it in a way, it disappears, but it makes it very much, um, very much user friendly. It can be um, a solution where uh, you you come into uh, an online store and you want to buy a product, um, and you can be offered um, insurance, or you can be offered um, um, consumer loan, or or things like that. But at the same time, um, it will also be um, it would also be connected to you as a person so that if you are not actually able to buy that product um, and, and to actually um, be able to uh, pay that loan, you will not be offered it. So there's a, there's a way of actually making sure that, uh, we're, that services are being offered to the right people at the right time. So that's one. Another thing would be, um, let's say you have um, uh, there. Everyone's talking about high electricity bills in Europe at the moment. With with uh, this API, you can actually provide a service where people where 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 the uh, service can go in, see what you pay um, in your electricity bill, and then tell you whether that is um, a good deal or a bad deal. Um, or uh, and then offer you um, other um, solutions like that would improve your financial health. Um, one thing that we've seen that just just very simple how how technology um, helps us with the uh, with our finances is in the UK where um, just uh, notifications on on your your um, when you you receive an invoice or or a, a payment in your in your online banking, um, and it tells you that if you don't pay it now, you will get extra on it. Like you, there will be an extra fee. That saved the UK population with seven uh, uh, billion um, pounds in 2019. That is a huge number. So, so this is how this technology can actually help us. I think 
back to your question because I, I didn't really answer that. So what are they asking for? They're asking for easy way to um, improve their finances. They're asking for help to um, uh, to invest. How do they start to invest? How do they start savings? What about are they having the best um, uh, housing loans? Um, they want to get help on on organizing um, their their daily financial life. And they want all everything that has to do with payments, obviously. Um, that is um, to make that just as easy as possible. Um, and I think Amazon is doing a great job there by uh, and how they are uh, doing is it uh, grab and go or something like that, where you just can you can go into the store, you just make yourself recognized with a um, QR code, go in, you put groceries straight into your bag. Um, and then you just leave the store and it's paid for, right? You could just go, wow, think about all the things that are uh, removed that people hate, like being in a queue and putting it up on the, uh, what you call it, where the groceries are and then pay and then back into the bags and then out the door. So, so just, it, there are so many opportunities to make life easier and life better. Um, and I think again, uh, financial health is, it's just as important as physical health. Because if you don't have financial health, you don't have a good life. It's certainly, and um, uh, and we'll touch we'll we'll touch on that in one moment. It sounds like tremendous opportunities for especially fintech startups, and we'll get to how you know they can cooperate directly with you and directly with Huawei. Uh, you know, towards the end of this talk, uh, so we can savor savor that. Uh, and then a quick note on Amazon. Yes, it sounds like just to repeat this back to you. They, uh, they held the IP for the longest time on, on one-click checkout. Sounds like they're now down to, to like zero-click checkout where you just sort of walk out based off of a QR or retinal scan or, you know, certainly certainly headed that way. Um, it also just speaks to the opportunities that, uh, that you know, tech companies, especially fintech companies, are, are just limitless uh, when it comes to helping consumers, uh, you know, solve problems. It sounds like Huawei has a, a bolus of asks and uh, quite an audience to to sell into. And then speaking of that audience, because it is different, and we got a few questions, uh, you know, on this, on the topic of cryptocurrency and how people think of money, uh, Siri, and just to frame that even better, in the EU, in the US, Canadian dollar, we have relatively stable currencies, certainly they'll throw the, you know, the Swiss franc in there, but that's not always the case globally. And your audience is globally. And so we're so curious to hear more from you on, you know, how do people outside of those uh, financial jurisdictions think about money where perhaps it, uh, it's, 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 it's value erodes a lot more quickly than, than the euro dollar does? Siri? Well, I'm, I'm not an expert on crypto, so um, I, I'm not sure if I actually want to answer that question. What I can say, though, is that what we see is that the, um, the downloads on the crypto apps in App Gallery is, is really trending and is just growing um, at a, quite a speed. So there is no doubt in my mind that um, the crypto will in one way or one shape or another um, be um, an important um, uh, important player in, in this game. Um, but I am not an expert. So I'm just going to leave uh, I leave it at that. Sure, certainly. And, and just a quick follow up there, and then we'll get to how people can reach you. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, like you established earlier, a lot, a lot of opportunities for fintechs and perhaps even um, even those that, uh, you know, that relate to uh, sort of like household, uh, you know, household electricity bills and, and, um, and uh, smart, uh, smart switches, perhaps there's a lot more integration there between, you know, internet fintech and, uh, and the real world. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump right into it because we're, we're, uh, we're, we're near the end. And, uh, you know, if there's not any other takeaway, it's simply there's so many opportunities for financial technology firms to to work with you sounds like you have an open door to that. Uh, how can they uh, work with you directly, uh, Siri and, and Huawei? Yeah, so um, we have people on the ground in 170 countries um, around the world, um, and and we are um, we are there. So so we're not just partnering; we're actually there to 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 work with you um, and to develop develop together with you and and make sure that the technology and and the um, app kit that we have available is actually easy for you to implement so so that would just be to reach out to every every like find the the local um, office 
Um, and then obviously, if you have a challenge with that, then um, you can reach out to me uh, directly, either on LinkedIn or uh, or or um, on email. Awesome. And is there is there a general Huawei URL for those fintechs that are looking to you know integrate with your app store? Uh, well, we just call it App Gallery, so I think that's where they could um, start to look. Sure, sounds good. Well, you mentioned your LinkedIn, so it's fair game. It's Siri Borsum, S-I-R-I-B-O-R-S-U-M. Look her up. She's on LinkedIn. Super friendly. <laughs> sounds like she'll, she'll, uh, she'll set your request and sort of get you uh, get you right in the right direction. Always always happy to help startups uh, uh, that have cool ideas, and, and sounds like you're more than open to, to uncovering them as you build out the Huawei App Store ecosystem. Well, it's been wonderful. Thanks for uh, sharing all your knowledge with us, Siri, today at Webit. Thank you so much, uh, Jordan, for, um, for, for this conversation. It was really good. Certainly. And for the team, uh, Webit, uh, there's uh, the Plamen's wonderful, Aniela, uh, awesome duo. Uh, for those that know, know him and, and this team in the background, I'm sure there's many of them. They'll never get enough praise for what they do uh, for web. Again, this is Jordan French, Grit Daily. Until next time, and hopefully like we established earlier, Siri will we'll do it in person.